Grace and peace to you all, and welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little, and I am a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you today. God knows each one of us personally, and God loves each one of us. We thank God for such wondrous love. We come this day into the presence of God. We come with overflowing hearts. We celebrate God's mercy and compassion. Praise be to God who offers us hope. We begin in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. For when we walk in the light of Christ, we have fellowship with one another. When we confess our sins, the one who is faithful and just forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. For in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God has showered mercy upon the entire world. Amen. What is fellowship? According to Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary, it means companionship, company, associate, the community of interest, activity, a feeling or experience, a unified body of people of equal rank sharing in common interests, goals, and characteristics, a partnership or membership. Fellowship means being a part of a group, a body of people. It is opposed to isolation, solitude, loneliness, and our present-day independent kind of individualism. We often hear people talking about fellowship. We hear it said that what we need is more fellowship. But our modern ideas of fellowship have become so watered down that the word no longer carries the same meaning it did in New Testament times. Many believe that Christian fellowship is just potlucks and drinking coffee. Fellowship is so much more. The early Christians clearly emphasized the importance of fellowship. In Acts chapter 2, it's noted, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. In the early church, day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. So, Fellowship may well have been the single most important characteristic of the early Christians. What good is doctrine or theology or sermons without community, without commitment, without sharing? And how can we truly pray without being involved enough in one another's lives so that we know what to pray about? And without fellowship, what is Holy Communion? Fellowship is what connects us all together in Holy Communion so that we are pulled together. We are truly one body in Christ and members of each other. Listen to the words of 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through chapter 2, verse 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, 
we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. It is believed that this early Christian writer is none other than the Apostle John, the last surviving disciple. It is also believed that John lived to be an aged man, well into his 90s. This aged Christian who had helped the little Christian communities through division, persecution, and growth sums up the Christian life with a single word, fellowship. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Today's lesson is John's how-to manual for having a vital relationship with God and with people. He'd seen a lot happen in his long life. He'd been one of the first followers of Jesus of Nazareth, and he had seen the risen Lord with his own eyes. John had somehow survived the persecutions that had erupted in the early years of the church. John uses the word fellowship four times in this short chapter. But what does the word really mean? We have a fellowship hall at church, and we have a fellowship time after the service. Fellowship is a cup of coffee, exchanging ideas, talk about the weather, meeting new members or visitors. Fellowship is what we do when we get together, before, during, or after worship. But is all of this fellowship really fellowship? Fellowship is to partner with God. Fellowship is giving God your life, handing over to God all of your family, all of your land, all of your resources. Through Jesus Christ, we daily hand our lives over to God, our aspirations, our dreams, our fears and failures, the cares that wear us down, that form creases on our faces. Fellowship is to partner with God. Fellowship is receiving from God. We can receive daily the forgiveness of sins, daily the promise of His presence, daily the reassurance of God's love, daily spiritual sustenance through God's words in the Bible. Fellowship is also partnering with other Christians. In Jesus, God calls us to partner with other believers. When Paul was about to visit the Christians at Rome, he wrote, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to you to strengthen you. But in the same breath, Paul hastens to add, that is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. These words are found in Romans chapter 1, verse 11. So Paul teaches fellowship as a partnership. Fellowship is making ourselves a means of grace to others, to become sacramental Christians. Fellowship is giving out of our resources and knowledge so that someone else is strengthened. Fellowship is having somebody pray for you. Fellowship is experiencing your Pardon me. Fellowship is sharing your experiences of trial or triumph with another who actually listens and supports you. Fellowship is a small group that invites us to offer our failings and struggles without fear and in complete trust. Fellowship happens whenever two or more persons get together to know God better, and then they seek to share their insights with another person. Fellowship happens in preaching, in praying together, in private counseling, discussion groups, at meals, gathering as a family. But the result, it's always the same. The power and presence of the Lord is known afresh, and that knowledge comes through fellowship. John is telling us that the only way to have fellowship with God and with one another is through Christ the eternal Son of God, coming in the flesh, shedding His blood for us, and rising from the dead to give us eternal life. We have fellowship with God, 
with one another only through the enfleshed and proclaimed word of life, and that is Jesus Christ. To withhold this partnership is to walk as a Christian in solitary confinement, or, in the words of John, to walk in darkness. And according to John, that walk, it needs to stay in the light. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Walking in the light, confessing our sin and seeking forgiveness, keeps us connected to God. Walking in God's light connects us to one another through the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin. Christ sacrificed himself so that we could be in fellowship with God and we in fellowship with each other. Jesus lives and reigns the Son of God. We participate in his reign by walking in the light of God as he is in the light. That light shines into our darkness and shows us our sin. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Fellowship is at the heart of following Jesus. Fellowship around the word and fellowship around the table. You can be a believer by yourself, but if you want to be a true follower of Jesus, it has to happen in community, keeping fellowship with other followers of Jesus. Walking together, we teach one another what scripture means, and we remember together Christ's great sacrifice for us in the sacrament of Holy Communion, that meal we share at Christ's table. Walking together, we also remind one another that our future is filled with hope. This church is here to walk beside us. This church is here to offer hope when we have given up hoping. This church is here to be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood so that together we can stay centered on Christ, be sent by Christ to offer Christ as we follow Christ. Let us keep walking in the light. Let us have fellowship. And now let us, God's people, pray. Holy Christ, our Lord and our Messiah, release us from the stifling darkness of the sin and doubt of our own making, to accept the cleansing of our souls by your resurrection that bolsters our faith and fellowship in your name through every facet of life. Jesus, light and peace of God, raise us to new heights in faith. Holy Christ, our Lord and our Messiah, Awaken your great grace within us, and especially in all of the lawmakers of our world, our country, and our community. Activate a deep desire to pursue, pursue unity in peace, health, and well-being, so that no one, anywhere, is further ravaged by disease, poverty, war, or any desperate need. Jesus, light and peace of God, raise us to new heights in faith. Holy Christ, our Lord and our Messiah, grant your healing touch of hope and love to soothe and comfort all who are unwell in body, mind, or spirit, and all who give them care. Holy Christ, our Lord and our Messiah, you are risen indeed as are all of our faith-filled departed who now shine in the glory of everlasting life with you. Jesus, light and peace of God, raise us to new heights in faith. Holy Christ, our Lord and our Messiah, infuse us with an abundance of spiritual oxygen to fill us all with the fresh air of your presence within and among us, lifting our purpose daily and carrying us on the current of your limitless love. Jesus, light and peace of God, raise us to new heights in faith. Holy Jesus, risen Lord, guide us to see with new eyes, to love with new hearts, and to hope with new faith that we, as Easter people, open ourselves to new life, unburdened by doubt, radiating your light from within. We ask through you, our glorious Redeemer and the Holy Spirit, our soul's wisdom, who together with God, our almighty creator, live and reign now and forever. Amen. And now, go into God's world, aware of God's call in your life. Follow our Lord Jesus Christ, who will lead you in paths of service and hope. Lean on the power of the Holy Spirit to give you courage and strength. 
May peace, joy, and love flow through you to others in God's name. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen.